Today we're going to find the value of the following series. So we have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n factorial plus n over n plus 2 factorial. And anytime you see a factorial in the numerator, you might think that it's going to diverge. But in fact, this thing converges, and that's simply because we've got a larger factorial in the denominator. And let's maybe first show carefully that this thing, in fact, absolutely converges. Well, we only really have to show that it converges because it's a series with only positive terms. So it kind of automatically absolutely converges, if it converges, that is. And we're going to do this with the comparison test. So we're going to pin this, well, below by zero and then above by something which is well known to converge. Okay, so let's do that. So we've got zero is less than or equal to n factorial plus n over n plus two factorial. But then in turn, that's less than or equal to n factorial plus n factorial over n plus two factorial. I think it's pretty clear that n is less than or equal to n factorial. Oh, but that's equal to two times n factorial over n plus two times n plus one times n factorial. But now these n factorials will cancel. Oh, and then this thing is less than or equal to two over n squared. But like I said, this is a well-known convergent series. We know that the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared is pi squared over six. Of course, we don't need to know the value there. We just need to know that this type of series converges and you can prove that without knowing the value. Okay, so anyway, now we're on to the series in question. Okay, so I'm gonna start by breaking this into two pieces and we don't really know we can break it into two pieces without knowing it absolutely converges, but we're good to go now. So let's write this as the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n factorial over n plus two factorial, and then plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n over n plus two factorial. Okay, so that's looking good. And now let's take these terms and simplify them like we did over here. So this n factorial over n plus two factorial, well, that's gonna simplify in this case to one over n plus two times n plus one. So let's write that down. One over n plus one times n plus two. Okay, great. So let's maybe write out what we have at this stage. So we've got the sum as n goes from one to infinity of, so we'll have one over n plus two times n plus one, and then plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n over n plus two factorial. So that's after that little bit of simplification has been done. And now remember that Taking a sum is pretty similar to taking an integral sometimes. And we would integrate this type of rational function using partial fraction decomposition. So that motivates us to try and use partial fraction decomposition for simplifying this. And that's exactly what we'll do. So let's take this one over n plus two times n plus one and write it as a over n plus two plus b over n plus one. Okay, good. And then we'll clear the denominators. So we'll clear the denominators by multiplying by n plus two times n plus one. And that'll leave us with a times n plus one plus b times n plus two equals the number one. So I flipped sides there, but I think that's pretty clear where that came from. And then at this stage, I'm gonna extract all of the constant terms from these two equations. I'll say that those are the coefficients of one, and then I'll also extract the coefficients of n. Okay, so for the coefficients of one, we have a plus two times b equals one. So we get a times one, b times two, and then there's a constant on the right-hand side. 
Then for the coefficients of n, I have, let's see, a plus b equals zero. Okay, so now I think we're in pretty good shape. Notice a plus b equals zero immediately tells us that b is equal to negative a. But now we can loop this back into the first equation, and what will that leave us with? Well, that leaves us negative a equals one. Oh, but that means that a is equal to negative one, and likewise, b will be equal to positive one. Okay, so that's nice. So now we're gonna start the evaluation tricks. So really, we've just done a couple of calculations first. So let's take this first sum and we're gonna write it as the limit of a partial sum. So we have the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum of lowercase n going from one to n of, well, this one over n plus two times n plus one, but expand it out using this partial fraction decomposition. So that'll be one over n plus one minus one over n plus two. Okay, great. So that's what we have for that first bit. And then what are we gonna do for the second one? Well, I'm gonna introduce a, a variable here. And that variable will be eventually sent to one. And so I'll write that as the limit as x goes to one. And then here we'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n over n plus two factorial times x to the n minus one. You might say, well, why do I have that x to the n minus one there? Well, that's because I like to think about this n ha as having come from taking the derivative of x to the n. So let's just maybe recall that over here that we've got the power rule maybe motivating this choice. The derivative with respect to x of x to the n is n times x to the n minus one. Okay, great. And now what we'll do is do a little bit of simplification on both of these. So I've got the limit as n goes to infinity for this first one. And now I'm gonna split these into two sums. And there's no problem doing that because those are finite sums inside of the limit. So I have the sum as n goes from one to capital N of one over n plus one. And then minus, again, the sum as n goes from one to capital N of one over n plus two. Okay, good. Then we're gonna write this thing as the limit as x goes to one of the derivative with respect to x of the sum as n goes from one to infinity of x to the n over n plus two factorial. Okay, nice. And now at this stage, I'm gonna do some change of indices. So I'll change my index here. I'll replace all of the n's with n minus ones. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So we'll have this limit as capital N goes to infinity of, well, I'm gonna also take the first term out of this, which is one over one plus one, in other words, one half. And then after that, I'll have plus the sum as N goes from two up to capital N of one over N plus one. So just to like note what happened, that's just an expansion of that sum. Okay. And then after changing my index, I'll have now the sum as n goes from two up to, well, it looks like it's gonna go up to n plus one, but I'm gonna make it go up just to n, and then we'll have one over n plus one, and then I'm gonna subtract off the term that I left out of this sum, which is the n plus one term. So that'll be minus one over capital N plus two. Okay, nice. And so, just to be clear there, all of those came from that second sum. And then we're gonna make a change of index over here as well, and that's because instead of having an n plus two factorial, I'd really like an n factorial. So here I'm gonna take n and replace it with n minus two. So now I'll have the limit as x goes to one of the derivative with respect to x now my sum is gonna start at three, 
because when n minus two is equal to one, n is equal to three, it goes up to infinity, and then we have x to the n minus two over n factorial. And now we can get to some simplification. So notice this sum right here is exactly the same as our now re-indexed sum. It's just one of them has a plus sign and one of them has a minus sign, so those two cancel. And then next up, as capital N goes to infinity, this term clearly goes off to zero. So that means this entire limit here will just simplify down to the number one half. So that means in the end we have one half and then we'll have plus the rest of this stuff. But I'm actually gonna do some manipulation on the rest of that stuff while we're at it. So we'll have the limit as x goes to one of the derivative of, let's see, I'm gonna take out a x squared from the denominator there or an x to the minus two just to make that look a little bit nicer. So one over x squared, but that's really gonna turn this x to the n minus two to an x to the n. But then I'm gonna start that as the sum as n goes from zero to infinity as well, because that's a well-known um, Taylor series. So now I'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. But I've made a change there. I've added on a zeroth, a first, and a second term. So that means I need to also subtract, well, a zeroth, a first, and a second term. And so that would be doing minus one minus x minus x squared over two. So we're left with something like that. And so next up, let's notice that this is pretty clearly e to the x, which means after a bit of simplification, we have one half plus the limit as x goes to one of the derivative with respect to x of, let's see, it's kind of a lot of stuff. We'll have e to the x over x squared. So let's write that, e to the x over x squared. And then we'll have minus one over x squared, minus one over x, minus one half. That's what we get from distributing this x squared through to all of the denominators. Okay, so now let's maybe bring that up and we've got just a very small calculation to finish this thing off. So here's where we left ourselves off and now we're ready to do the last calculation. So I've got my one half, which I'll bring down. And I've got my limit as x goes to one. And then let's take this derivative. So we'll have to use the quotient rule for this first term. So that'll be something like x squared e to the x and then minus two x times e to the x all over x to the fourth. Like I said, just using the quotient rule. And then let's see, the derivative of this one over x squared term will give us a, well now that minus will change to a plus, we'll have two over x cubed. Likewise here, we'll have one over x squared. And then the derivative of one half is clearly equal to zero. Okay, so now we can really just finish this thing off. So we have one half, and then we can plug x equals one into all of those, given that that is continuous at x equals one. So let's see, this first one will give us a, minus e, so we'll have a minus e, and then plus two, plus one. So putting that all together, we have seven halves minus e. And that would be the final value of this sum. And that's a good place to stop.